Hi everybody, welcome back to another WoW tutorial. My name is Tide, and today we're going to be going over the three roles in World of Warcraft. That being the tank, the healer, and the damage dealer, otherwise known as the DPS. This video is going to be targeted more toward new players who are just hitting 100 or who are just starting off the game. When you hit level 10, you're going to get your talent tree, you're going to be able to pick what role you want to be, and at 15, you get to start doing dungeons. Now in dungeons, you have five player groups, one tank, one healer, and three DPS. And when you get into raids, that number begins to fluctuate depending on how many players you have. If you have 12, 14, 16, you might have uh, two tanks, six healers, and like eight DPS. Or it depends on, of course, you know, not, not really eight DPS, but it depends on the group size and how you're going to balance it out. WoW currently has 11 classes and we'll have 12 classes when the Demon Hunter comes out. And that makes for a lot of different class combinations per raid and per group that uh, high tier raiders are going to want to be able to pick which classes are going to be in their raid group and not try to have too many doubles or too many triples of anything. So we're going to go ahead and start talking about these roles. Let's get into it. The first role we're going to be talking about is my personal favorite, the tank. Now I play a tank currently and I love it. The only th issue is that tanks are kind of rare very few are out there mainly because it's a big responsibility when it comes to tanking um, you have very little margin of error once you get into the heroic and mythic fights and you want to make sure that you're prepared for that <clears throat> a tank's job is to be the guardian of the group and what their goal is is to hold threat threat is an unseen number that tanks generate in order to keep the attention of the of the enemies on them so while all of the characters in your group are building threat, the tank is designed to build the most threat without doing too much damage. Tanks are relied on to damage mitigate themselves so that they are able to reduce incoming damage and try to stay alive as long as they possibly can and make it as easy on the healers as possible to keep them alive. Tanks in high level tier experiences are going to be needing to learn how to kite, and how to properly position bosses, make sure their synergy with the second tank is good. In a single man group, you can pretty much do everything on your own and not have to worry about too much as long as your healer is keeping you alive, but you gotta make sure that you're not standing in things and you're keeping your damage mitigation up so that the healer doesn't have to blow all of his mana on healing you and is able to heal the other group members too. A good tank keeps aggro off of his team, positions the boss correctly, and keeps himself alive. A good tip you might want to know as you're leveling up is whenever you're going to tank something, face the back of it toward the group because a lot of a lot of uh, bosses have conal attacks that'll hit you in a cone in the front and if anybody's behind you, they might hit you as well. When you're tanking in a raid with another tank, you're going to want to make sure you guys are taunting off of certain stacking mechanics. For example, you'll have a boss that'll give you a, he'll hit you with something and it'll reduce all of your armor by 20% and that'll keep stacking so his next attack will do 40% then 60% then you're gonna die so what you want to make sure is you and the other tank are taunting off of each other to to switch the debuff that way nobody gets killed prematurely and just in case you don't know a taunt is a spell you get as a tank that you immediately grab the attention of your current target the classes that can tank in World of Warcraft are the Protection Warrior, the also named Protection Paladin, the Blood Death Knight, the Guardian Druid, the Brewmaster Monk, and in Legion, Demon Hunters. Next we're going to talk about healers. They are the group support and the backbone of the group. All healers are equipped with a variety of healing spells and different methods of being able to heal their allies, and a healer's ultimate goal is to keep their entire group or raid alive till the end of the encounter. Healers are designed to be able to heal their whole group and keep themselves out of taking damage. Healers don't want to be hurting themselves so that they have to continuously heal themselves. It's a waste of mana. Healing is very mana intensive. You have to make sure you're watching your mana and keeping your mana up. Many healers have ways to bring their mana back up such as uh, Hymn of Hope or Innervate. A couple other little ways you can do it. In some fights, healers are required to remove ailments off their target. Now, when you're in a raid group, you have quite a few other healers that you can be communicating with to be able to rotate around your dispels, your cures, your cleanses, whatever you want you need to be using at that fight. And you want to be able to rotate your healing cooldowns. Now, healers have some insane healing cooldowns that give some crazy, crazy effects, like the Shaman's Tide Totem that can 
literally link everybody's health together to make it easy to heal them. Or Discipline Priest Big Bubble, which is super cool looking. And there's just a whole mess of ways for healers to keep their party alive. However, it sounds easier on paper than it does in action. You have to be worrying about the tank staying alive because bosses will kill them rather quickly. And you want to make sure that they're, you're, the rest of your group, your DPS, aren't standing in garbage, aren't getting killed, aren't standing in fire. And if they do, you got to make sure you top them off. And by top them off, I mean fill their health bar all the way up. Now, a good healer will apply shields and heal his allies to allow the group to emerge victorious. Now, again, it sounds easier on paper than it is in actuality, because many fights require healers to do some intensive stuff. Fights like Gorefiend, that has an entire phase where he just deals raid-wide damage, and at the same time, the tanks have to be pulling off to... pulling out of the stack group to hit incoming souls, and that even causes more damage to the raid. Healers have a lot of responsibility. The only thing is that makes it more favorable than tanking is because you only have two tanks when you can have four healers. You're still in competition. You still need to be pulling the numbers, doing as much healing as you possibly can. No overhealing. Overhealing means do not heal a target that's health is already full. And make sure that you're keeping everyone alive and you're doing a good job. All classes that can be healers are Discipline and Holy Priests, Restoration Druids, Holy Paladins, Restoration Shamans, and Mistweaver Monks. Last but definitely not least are the Damage Dealers, or DPS. The DPS are the bread and butter of their group. They use high damage attacks to deal out as much damage as possible, and they need to be helping the healers by staying out of AoE, and staying out of fire, and staying out of bad stuff. Every class has defensive cooldowns and movement increasing effects. We need to make sure that the DPS are using them. We want to make sure you're getting out of things you're popping your defensive so that you don't have to take as much damage as you normally would and you're alleviating the healers so that they don't have to waste mana on you. Many DPS classes have ways that they can support the entire group. Actually, more like classes have ways that they can support their entire group regardless of their spec. For example, very important moves like Heroism, Bloodlust, or Time Warp. Now these are abilities that affect the entire raid group and increases your attack speed and casting speed by 40% I want to say. The DPS have to make sure they're following mechanics, especially in raid fights where you have to be moving out of things or filling certain requirements so that the boss can keep going without killing everybody. You want to make sure you're moving things out of the raid if you get something that's going to blow up. You want to make sure that you're staying out of bad stuff, you're staying out of the way of things, you're moving out of the raid, and at the same time, pumping out as much damage as possible. DPS later in the game have a lot of weight on their shoulders when it comes to their DPS, which is their damage per second. That's why they're nicknamed that. They have to make sure that they're doing enough DPS to be at that level of rating. So for example, if you're going in a heroic Hellfire Citadel and you're pulling 20k DPS, you're not going to cut it. 20k, 20,000, that is not enough to be in heroic Hellfire Citadel. A good DPS does as much damage as they possibly can while staying out of bad stuff and aiding the group in any way they can. Now, every single class in World of Warcraft can be damaged. A few classes in World of Warcraft, the ones that I haven't named yet, are only damaged, as in they can't heal and they can't tank. And those would be the Hunters, the Rogues, the Mages, and the Warlocks. Well, that about wraps it up for the three roles in this game. I hope I was able to help somebody out. I hope I was able to help somebody get a better view or a better perspective on what the three roles do and what they are in charge of maybe you'll have more appreciation for your healers for your dps for your tanks now everybody has a responsibility that they need to do in the raid they need to make sure that they're following mechanics they need to make sure that they're doing their role doing their job and you will successfully kill any boss so long as all three of those requirements were met I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give me a like and subscribe, and I will do something a little bit more advanced next week, hopefully. If you guys have any suggestions on what you think I should do, or a video you think I should make, uh, go ahead and leave a comment. Go ahead and, you know, let me know. Find a way to let me know, and I will go ahead and do my best to figure out a way to do it. I hope you guys have a great day. Take it easy, and have a good one.